Hello, doll costuming friends. This is Cheryl Williams from the Grovian Doll Museum and the Carmel Doll Shop. We have just finished a wonderful seminar um, this weekend, and we're going to be uh, YouTubing this for you to watch again the whole process um, on the kit. I'm going to show you first the doll that was the inspiration for the equestrian costume, and this this lovely lovely lady in purple with her white jacket. Um, this is a Hussard influenced costume. Hussards were the cavalry, light cavalry for many countries. And so I think it's appropriate that she is dressed in a, in a Hussard um, style for a woman, obviously, because the men would have been the, um, the light cavalry. But that's why all the wonderful metallics and the and the jacket that goes over the shoulder that's trimmed with the fur, and then her hat that has significance with a little leaf on it, and we'll talk about that when we get to that. But anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing, and then if Michael will turn the camera over to what we did this weekend, we changed up her um, costume in from purple to red. The Hussar costumes always were very brightly colored, and against the gold, the red is really stunning. So we have her skirt now on the antique. All the buttons were missing down the front. So we added all the half round brass buttons here. Um, soutache, antique soutache for this. Um, trimmed and bound in another wider gold braid. Um, a touch of lace to be feminine on the collar and the cuffs. And um, then the white jacket is just decorative, goes on the shoulder, on the left shoulder of the doll. She's also holding her riding crop, which is appropriate for, for her costume. And I'm just gonna move the purple one over just a little bit to show you. I figured if she was going to be doing a riding costume, she would be riding side saddle at this period. So we did a little lift on the skirt. The skirt's a longer on this side, you can see, um, because she would be sitting on that and needed to be a little longer, but it'd be dragging around on the ground if we left it like that. So it's lifted, whoops, she lost her riding crop. It's lifted with a button and a thread loop. And we'll put her jacket back up. Um, we'll be making the tassels for this project, which are fun to do in, in the metallic, um, and also adding the fur trim around the jacket. Well, Cheryl, this was a this this is maybe your most complicated class you've done here. Do you think? I think it could be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It certainly took me the most research of anything I've done um, because I had to look up the Hussar costumes of which where many European countries were using these, and they're very similar uh, from country to country, and they don't change that much. I think they started out in the 1700s um, and have moved up. I know the last one I saw was 1902, which was Queen Victoria's facades. So um, they're very, very interesting to research. Um, now, in your kit, you're going to get your complete pattern um, with her color picture on the front. And then you will have um, your pattern pieces, instructions, um, some hints on sewing technique. Um, all of that comes in your pattern. The fabric kit itself, you'll get in an envelope and it's got the white jacket in one um, package, your hat kit and another. This has um, a, a pattern piece for the front that'll give you the positions of all your soutache and you'll see how I'm going to use this um, for preparing the soutache for down the front. Then of course it's got its lining and the beautiful red silk fabric that we're going to be using. It's actually a shot silk so it's got the black and the red together, which is what makes it so elegant mm -hmm. and works so well with the black and Persian that, lamb. That we had made for this project, so ah, it's very... Yes. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. Then there's also the trims that we're gonna use. Um, you've got 50 of these 
tiny, tiny bronze uh, buttons with the loop on the back of them. 50. 50 <laughs> for the costume, yes. That gives you some idea of how many, <laughs> how many loops of such hash you're going to be making to do this because there's a button for every one. Um, you've also got your hooks and eyes. You've got your, your little uh, coin that's part of the top of the hat. If you go over here, it's embedded in her tassel mm -hmm. right there. And that must have some significance. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it does. <laughs> then, um, this is the, the sutash, not sutash, this is just going to be your plain braid that you're going to use for making your tassels and also the um, this that goes, that ties on her white jacket. You can see it comes around. I've tied it under Which the side here. Which is really chic, I think. Yes, and we'll learn to make these beautiful gold tassels I'm looking forward yourself. to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then of course the gold braid that goes around the jacket, um, your twill tape for you're doing your cartridge pleating on your skirt. And speaking of cartridge pleating, I've given you some tiger tape, so it makes it much easier to do your um, cartridge pleating evenly. Um, a razor blade, a single edge razor blade, please be careful. It's covered when you get it, and that's for cutting the lamb when you need to do that. Then you've got some single edge bias, um, single, single fold bias tape that we'll use on the skirt to give the bottom of the skirt some extra body. And then the last thing that we're you've got in, in the trim kit are going to be glue dots and you're going to be fascinated to see how we incorporate this um, in the project. Um, you're going to need Weeha glue for this. Which won't come in the kit. No, it doesn't come in the kit, but this is these are things that you're going to want to purchase and I have a whole supply list for you. So that is our project. Well, and, and Cheryl, the one thing that we gave our students as part of their package the uh, mat. Yes, the and I was fascinated mat. to see how important that was. It was in this project. We so, not only used it as a pressing mat with our iron, we also pinned into it, we cut into it, we did not into the mat, but using it for um, cutting and, and flatlining our pieces. It's a wonderful thing. If you don't have one, this is something you absolutely yeah. and, need. And um, I mean, it was. I mean, I use ours all the time, but this weekend was really really important, important. to have this. So they yes. really need to order that they do. to do this. They really do. They don't if they don't already have one. Right, right. Mine stays on my ironing board all the time, and then I also move it with me when I'm doing my handwork because it's great to stick pins into it. Oh yes, things. yes. It's but but marvelous. this this for for doing all of that front work was so important. Yes, it was. So well, I think that's it. So should we get should we get, Let's started? get started? Okay. okay. We will be back with the next step. Of course, the first thing we're going to do is cut all the patterns out of the paper. There's one that's got the back skirt needs to be joined and it says right on it join and you just tape it together down the center. It's not cut on the fold, it's just laid out big and you'll see this in a minute when we are laying it out on the silk. So we're going to start out by cutting the lining first. So this is the lining which is um, a nice lawn to give the silk some body and be sure that you measure your straight grain so that you are really are straight grain. So you measure and from those here. those are those up and down the, lines. Yes and those are the up and down lines with the little arrows on the end. So you will lay out on your on your lawn and lay everything out. Be sure that you've got all the pieces that need to be lined. Each one of them will say cut one lining that needs to be cut in lining. Um, and then they'll some only they'll say just cut in silk. So we will say that we have done all the pinning and measuring and we've got that. Hey, can I ask done. you a question when yes. you say cut out the pattern? You mean um I mean, first, you're going to cut the pattern the away line. from the background and leave the lines. Okay. Okay. So it's right up to the lines. It's right up to the lines. Okay. It's not, um, be sure you cut all your notches because on this skirt, remember I said in the beginning that we've got one side longer than the other. 
So it's we have to confusing. keep that in mind. Yes. It's very confusing. But I've helped you out by giving you notches in different don't, positions. Yeah. If they don't work, if they don't line up, that's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> the construction is wrong. That, okay. That gave our class a little bit of uh, Yeah, it took a little bit to get this heads. all, all yeah. lined up. Okay. So we've got that done. We're pretending all, we've got that all laid out. Right. And this is the piece I was telling you that needed to be joined. So you can see it says right here, join pattern here. And then um, the other thing we're going to want to do before we flatline it to the silk is transfer all the markings. So on this pattern piece, we have to transfer the placket line marks. And they can do that with a Frickson pen? With a pen. Frickson pen, or, yes. Or could they use a, a dressmaker's pen too? Sure, yeah. sure. Um, and on the, on the bodice, you're gonna wanna transfer your da darts on the center front. And this is just on the, the, the lining. Right. right. And then on the skirt front, you have to transfer all of your marks for the setting of your soutache. And what I like to do is do a center front line and then a line on either side so that it duplicates the pattern. So here's our, let's grab our pattern here. So you can see I've just put this under my lining. And it actually shows through. It does, it, it yeah. shows right through. And then I, I put the center front, the side lines, and also the cross lines. So you're gonna see where to set your Sutash loops on the front. And some of the students in this class um, actually took the um, the pattern and the lining up to the window. They did. And put it on the window and yeah. just drew it out that way. But I was working on this the other day and I just put my lining over it and I didn't have any trouble yeah. seeing through. So you want to transfer all but of that. But you those. have phenomenal vision. <laughs> I've got Superman vision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then there are a couple pattern pieces that are not lined, including this long um, bias that's going to bind the edge of the jacket, and then the collar is also not lined. So you just don't forget. And you can see I laid it out this way so I could get, I took that pattern piece and extended it to 19 inches. So we're 19 inches from here to here. And this this and this layout bias. will be in there. Yes. in their pattern so oh, they yes. can see it. Yeah. And I right. think what's great, Cheryl, is they've got this nice piece right here and they've got this whole little extra. A big chunk A big chunk here. here so they can dress a, a small bebe or right. a, a lady or doll or mignonette, uh, mignonette. Or whatever. And they've but got there is a, little, a nice piece of yeah. silk there. I mean, they could if they made a terrible mistake on the jacket, they'd almost have enough to Probably to, to recut it thing. over mm -hmm. here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so after we put the pieces down, then we're going to flat line. And what that means is we're going to base the, the lining to the silk. And it's hard to see white on you white can't. here, but if you turn it over, then you can see it. Mm -hmm. You can see all the... All so it's basically flat lining. It's just basically a, a big running stitch. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and it's best to make it big because you're going to pull it out at some point. It's a lot easier to pull out right. these long stitches. Yeah, don't don't over sew. Don't this overdo just... it. <laughs> so this will take a while to get prepped, but it's important to have it prepped. Now the one thing that I I didn't do right here. I see. You made a mistake. I made a mistake. Show me. <laughs> I'll feel better about it. It's myself. right here. What did you do? <laughs> okay. What did when you do? When we start the jacket, we actually don't flatline it onto the silk. We're going to cut it out and we're going to machine stitch this front so that we oh, have a terrible clean, mistake. It was awful. Just yeah. an awful well, and, mistake. And won't it also add a little more bulk to the. Right. And it makes a really nice, clean finish. But I think here. for even just for machine sewing, it, it's okay to flatline it. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll yes, we'll except that this has got to be turned once this is... Oh, yes. oh it's okay. just the front. It's okay. only the front. Got it. That's the only thing that just I, the front. I did wrong. So, of course, once we have it flatlined here, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to carefully cut out the silk so it's exactly the same size as the lining. Don't 
have and don't rush over this people. this part is um i noticed in the class there was a little bit of grumbling that why do we have to do this <laughs> which it's really important isn't it's it? very very important and we are doing this a la old costuming and this is what the old costumes had most of them were flat lined with something. It might not have been lawn like I'm using here. It might have been Tarleton or organdy or something, but yeah. they were flat lined, not conventionally lined with wrong sides together. So when we finish here, you're going to see that the jacket has raw edges inside that then we will have to overcast all of them. So that's the deal now. Once you get all the markings on here, you can cut it out carefully and then we'll be back. Oh, and don't forget that any place you've marked the Frixon pens and you don't want to press it again, um, will disappear with the heat. So just be sure that your fabrics are well pressed before this point yes. so that you don't have to go back with the iron and have to redo all of your markings. Yeah, your pressing has to be perfect at, yes, this, it at does. this stage. It does, so good. All right, we'll All right, return. Well, we're going to cut this out, and we will come back and show you the pieces. Okay, we're going to start with the skirt, because I like to have that finished, and then we'll fit the jackets over that. So the first thing we're going to do on the skirt is mark the placket line down the center back. And I did with a basting stitch down the middle, and then you take it to the dot, and then I just marked it with the Frixon going up. So the first thing we'll do is cut this right down over that white, the, the center back, and we're gonna cut it all the way to the bottom, to the dart. Then we're going to, uh, actually, we should have stitched this first and then yeah. cut it down. We're, we're, so we're jumping ahead We're jumping here. ahead. We're, okay. we're all and then we will we're tired we're tired <laughs> it's been a few days then when we go to sew this we're going to line up the upper edge here so that they're together and you have an illustration in your pattern on how to do this this is called flat placket construction and then it's going to come down here you've got to visualize that there's a quarter inch seam allowance right here and it's going to sew so that when you sew this line down your stitching line, it's going to be a quarter of an inch. You're going to take one stitch over and continue this. We've got to get it out here on the other side. So it's like a V shape of the red you see in the mm -hmm. middle. So it's quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and across to the other side. Could they press this? this uh, over to make it easier to finish it? I, you could. You certainly could do that. There's no reason yeah. you couldn't. And then, and then, and and then, then you'd then, be halfway done on the other side. Right, you'd and be, then it's easy yeah. to just do a... Good idea, that's how Michael. I would, well, I, Is that what you would have done? That's what I would have done. Okay, well, I think we'll try that So then. We'll, we'll, we, we'll, we'll press it, and then we'll sew it. Right. Okay, shall okay. we do it? I added something to it. Hooray. Hooray, yes. <laughs> All right, so we'll get <laughs> this idea. done. Okay. And then we will we'll come back. back and show you how it turned out. Okay, now we have finished our back placket. Um, remember, we had the slit down here. Then we used the straight binding and sewed it on, turned it under, slip stitched it down here. And when we got to this part, you can see it's continuous, except that when we finish it, this side is overlapping here. So you have a very elegant look down here. Let me show you the back. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to do, this flat placket. Flat placket. And back then, opening, that's Yes, it. back opening, yeah. <laughs> okay. And if you really want it perfect, you do what I did here, which is do a little stitching right across the corner there. It's kind of on a horizontal. It is. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like cutting the corner. And what it does is it keeps this in position. So it, it's 
it's tacked down there mm -hmm. essentially. That's, that's called couture. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So now I want to go on to the front panel before we sew it to the side and the side backs because we're going to be doing a lot of hand sewing and work on that. And I think it's easier to handle it as one piece, small piece rather than the big piece. Okay. All right, we're, we're gonna, we'll start, we'll be right back and we will go to the next step. Okay, now we've finished our back placket, we've set that aside. So now we're gonna go to our skirt front and we need seven four and a half inch pieces. And I found by accident that this works. If you, I'm, most, most people have this little sewing gauge um, so I slide it over to four and a quarter, four and a half, not four and a quarter, and I lay the soutache right in the slot like that. And then I come to the end and I cut it off and, and we, do that seven yep. times. Okay, and we have these in our boutique if you can't yes. if, find it. But what's important about this is sometimes our tapes stretch. Yes. And this is not going to stretch. Yeah, and, and and the ruler is nice and solid, so you can get it right to the end and get seven perfectly matched mm -hmm. pieces, which is what you have to and, have. And I think it's genius that the sutash just fits. I know, there. it just, you know, it was measuring. I thought, oh, it fits in the hole. That's just great for this project. Okay, so, so now... So we do that seven times. Seven times. Now I have jumped ahead and done a few of these for you. So you can see. Can we turn that? that um, oh, I'm sorry. My the, uh, the, oh, that would probably be a really fine idea okay. to turn it toward you so the people can see it. So we're going to make seven um, essentially figure eights, except I think we're not going to cross over. We're just going to butt them together. So let me show you what. And then, of course, really important here, we've got the wool mat that we can stick our pins into because I can't move this. Mm -mm. And then I also found that if I put my pattern in a slip, you know, a slip case here, that we could glue on it and the glue won't stick. So we're going to be, yeah. of course, using Weeha, which is we're going to allow a little setup time on before we take it. But I found if I started at the top and work my way down to the bottom, by the time I got to the bottom, this one was dry and yeah. I could use. A wee hard set takes a couple, a it, little bit of time to set. It does, to set. But when it sets, it's really Strong. nice and firm. Okay. So here is one of our four and a half inch pieces. And since it's soutache, you know, it's got a cord in each side. And then the, the metallic is um, crisscrossed over it which means with it in the in, on each side, we can make it into a loop. So I sort of just, you saw me just about half it, and then I'm gonna take and pull it into a loop on the end like that. And then give yourself a nice tug on it, and it'll make a nice flat loop on mm -hmm. the end, which is what we don't want that standing up. Yeah, we want it rounded. We want it rounded and flat. So then we'll take the other side. And you have to work this, don't you? You do, mm -hmm. you do. Because you're sliding your metallics over those cords. So then I take it and take a pin and pin it to the, the center front, essentially, spot. And then I take another pin, wrap it around here to the center put a pin there. Then I also put a pin in the end of the loop so that I know it's going to be the same on each side. So we're going to take this around. It's going to overlap just a tiny bit like that. And then I'm going to add one more pin here to the other end. If you just cooperate for me, we're good. Okay, then we're oh, going to You are doing it upside down, Cheryl, so. Yes, you're, you're... it's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then we're going to take our Weehaw, and we're going to take 
this great spudger tool. I love this tool. This is new to you, isn't it? It was, and I found all kinds of interesting uses for it, but it's really good to embed the glue into the metallic. Um, and generally, I don't glue on dresses, but well, this soutache was no other way to handle yeah. than to, to glue the ends. I mean, we're just gluing it up. so it's holding a position. Yes, right. We're and not we're gluing, gluing it on the dress. No, right? no. We're gluing these little... And then I found that if I took my spudger and pushed down on it, it embedded the glue into the trim. So, and that's all going to be covered. Yes, it will. Yes, good point. There are two more pieces of soutache that go down the center that cover all those joins, so we don't have to worry about but that. But this helps, you know. I mean, we tried to sew this onto the dress, it would be it was monstrous, yeah, it monstrous really would. thing. It really would. And um, they had uh, they had glue in the 19th century, yeah, they used it. Okay, so I've got this one already bent on the ends, so we'll just do our, our corners here. Down, come on, cooperate for me. <laughs> yeah, it is difficult doing this upside down where I'm not really seeing what I'm doing here. And I can't slide it because obviously I've got all my pins stuck into my mat. And I'm just gonna overlap about an eighth of an inch here. Again, then we will take Weehaw and, and stick you know, it the on wee, the overhead. The, the Weehaw applicator, you do have to keep them clean. You do, clean and a pin in them mm -hmm. so that they're I mean, they open do the lids, next time. But, but the pin works the too. The pin works great. If, if you do the lids, it still gets clogged up in here. Mm -hmm. So the pin is a great, a great thing. Now, spudger again. And embed it into the, into the metallic. Overlap your, your ends. And then let it dry. So then we'll come back up to the top, and this is the piece we're going to use to start applying okay. to our... Shall we pull it off and, and demonstrate that it will come off without much... Without much... Drama. Of an issue. And that's another good use for the uh, yes. spudger. Right. So there's our there loop. There it's ready to sew on, isn't yep, it? Yep, it is. Okay, all of our loops are dry here, so I'm just setting them out. They're still hooked together. And now I take one and I position it over the white line that we've got basted in here. So I've done one already and put our little buttons in the ends because you're gonna stitch it together except for this tiny little hole down here at the bottom for the loop. The hardest thing about doing this is to get these parallel all the way down. And I find it's easier if you just take a pin and put it in parallel on, the, on one side and then the other. And that way you've got a good shot of getting it straight. But if it doesn't look straight as you're doing it, stop and correct it because mm -hmm. it's going to be very obvious it will be. when it's finished. And this is military. We can't We can't have anything out of position. And we can't put a bow on it or, or lace. Any, or anything else to cover it up. So since this is Sutash, we have the two cords and we have this I think we could show it on this where they can. Oh, really where you see can it. really see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to be stitching in the ditch here. It's got a perfect place to sew. And isn't it and it's always easier too in oh, that area. Much easier. Yeah. And don't get sloppy if you go outside the ditch. <laughs> yeah, take right. it out. Right. Because it's going to curl and buckle and not lay flat, which mm -hmm. is which is our ultimate glow goal here. So I'm just keep pushing this together so that it is going to be parallel and gonna be in the right spot. And I'm 
whoops, using a very long, actually quite a long stitch. Get this unhooked. Of course, if there's any pin, it's going to grab onto your thread. Oh, sure, it just course. reaches right out and does that. So you're seeing, and you're taking you're taking fairly good size. Stitches. I am mm -hmm. small in the front, but look at the back. Mm -hmm. And because it's in the ditch, and because the thread color we're using, you're it not going to see it. No. You're not going to see no, it. It blends at all. in beautifully. Yeah, but, but still, the ditch is where it's at because yep, otherwise you're right. it puckers. Right. Our first class ever was with you know we we go right to uh, let's do a class with Sutash. <laughs> right. Yes. And that was with Louise. That's right. I've I've done one of those myself. Yeah. <laughs> was um a lot of work a lot of work, a lot of work. well this uh, i think the sutash on this this costume is the most work too isn't it it's a lot of work too mm -hmm. yeah but at least they're they're pretty much going in straight lines we're not doing a lot of right looping we're not doing curving. loopies well a loop on each end yeah but, but we're not doing flowers or, or anything else mm -hmm. you're right so then we it's actually move. pretty relaxing once you get the hang of it. Yeah. Well, I always find hand sewing relaxing. I really like it. So. Well, and, and a lot of military costumes have sutash that is sewn on by machine, <sighs> which I think is I, unbelievable. I think it is, too. That they could do it. And that, so, so let's back just out noises, Eddie fulfilling Eddie your coming orders. In. Yes. <laughs> so that's really going together nicely. It is, and I'm just checking now to make sure that I really am in equidistant line. in here mm -hmm. and going. And I leave a little bit of that loop at the end, so that when we sew our button in there, there's a little it's spot for it to go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because the bu the buttons are metal, and they've got a little bit. They've got a nice little loop on the bottom. Oh, that's not looking. Got to get this a little closer. <clears throat> I'm keeping it parallel. I mean, in a way, we could have used one wide piece of trim but it wouldn't oh, have the it same wouldn't have the look at it wouldn't all have, it wouldn't have the look at all no uh -uh. so that's why it has to be this a little bit complicated but not impossible. yeah and of course this is what was on the original right take it to the back and knot it off That's not coming off. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't. That's not, not coming, coming off. off. And then I'm going to re-knot my thread. And I'm only using a single thread to put these buttons on. Oh, are you going to do the buttons? Now? Yeah. <clears throat> you might as well. I huh? found it, it's somewhat satisfying oh. when you're sewing the oh, loop yeah. on to finish it with a button. Well, I, so. do, I do like to get steps completed. That's yeah. my... So I've got my buttons laying here, and you can see... And these are precious little buttons. They are. Look at that. Look at that beautiful little loop on it. Mm -hmm. And tiny. Tiny, tiny. So I'm just going to... And people don't lose these, because if you lose them, <laughs> and you call us in a panic, we may not have any That's more. right. <laughs> this is the world we live in. And yes, you could probably work this thread band to the other end, but I don't like to do that. No. <laughs> I would just as soon finish it off here. And of course, when you're finished, you'll want to remove all the white stitches, but 
for now there's there is well we can't do it till we're all done you're right we can't so there's one finished at the top the last one we just did and then of course you need another button there but that's what the it looks like and it's and we only have so, to do that what so seven more times that's all yeah that's <laughs> that's all <laughs> that's all yeah it's yeah. it's fun and we'll, then we have to enjoy put the, this. the center center yes. line <clears throat> and then there will be two rows of the soutache that cover our join in the middle there. And do you do it on the line or on each side of the line? I do, well, actually, when we get to there, it's two 11 inch pieces. I'm gonna join them. I'm gonna whip them together. Oh, okay, so that'll that make it end much up easier. With one, one, and of course, then it's gonna sit right on your line. All right, so like right that. in the center. Yep, but I found that if you try to do them singly, they, they end up sort of higgly Moving. piggly, mm -hmm. yes. and. It doesn't look nice where if you join them together, you've got a really nice look there. So that's it. So I'll come back when I have them finished. Okay, we'll be back. Well, we have almost the front finished. Now the only thing we have to do is whip the two 11 inch pieces together and put it down. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sew it down. But in the meantime, I think I'm gonna go ahead and join the rest of the skirt pieces, and then we'll finish that 11 inch oh, and piece. Now, now, why don't you be honest, um, <clears throat> Cheryl? Yes. What you're trying to say is you wanna break from Sutash for a minute. <laughs> didn't want to tell them that. <laughs> I had enough. Enough sutash and enough buttons. You yeah. know, there are 50 buttons in your kit, so. Yeah, we want a little, little break. Yes, we want a little break from that. So anyway, we'll be back. All right, we'll get that sewn up. So we have to take two 11 inch pieces of the sutash and I've been sitting here working on this. And what I, can you get close enough to see? Yes. I'm just picking up one of the sutap tashes from the back and the other and one. And you're going through the, 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 the center. Right, center the center, center of the cords. Kind of wrapped around the, the loopy part? Yeah. The round part? And uh, we'll turn it over and you can see on the front, you shouldn't see anything. I don't, you're not seeing anything, are you, Michael? No. Good. No, and, and I'm looking at it in life and in <laughs> photographs. Yeah. So it's just, It's very you know, simple. It's very simple. And then I'm just going to pull it out and make sure it's nice and straight. Then we will put it down the center of the skirt that we can show now has been all sewn together. Um, so that our inset is there. This is, of course, is our center back with that beautiful placket. Um, look at the gorgeous fabric. It just shines in the lights. So, and so when we press these seams, is there any special way to do this? Good point. So on the instructions, I, I state that we're going to press, let's turn it to the inside where we're gonna be actually doing it. And we haven't overcast it yet. We haven't overcast it yet. Oh, and don't forget to cut off your notches, too. Yeah. So the front is going to press toward the center front, both of those seams toward the center front, and the back, the side backs, get pressed toward the back. And then at this point, you should go ahead and overcast that because it's a lot easier to handle than when it's all done. So... That's what needs to be done. That's the next step Inside. that we'll do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, after we apply our After center. we apply. But you know, I'm gonna mention one thing in case I forget. We have two little pleats up here at the top of this, and that's why those seams are pressed toward the center front. It calls for a half inch pleat. So what I do is fold that down, and the half inch is whatever this is right here. So okay. I'm folding right on the seam line, and then I'm just going to put a pin in for now, but I'm gonna go back and do a sort of a four corner tack here. So that- when That way it lays down properly. It lays down properly because we're gonna have to be folding this inside to do our cartridge pleating. But this little pleat is necessary 
right here to make that and front the original, panel stick I out. Has that. It does. Mm -hmm. Indeed it does. So there's our half inch plate on this side. And no, that's not that can't be right. Here's our half inch plate on this side. Don't do it the other way. Going, and we have that not... thing called a meshing. Um, we can measure that to make yeah. sure it's just perfect. Yeah. So that's what it's going to look like. And then we're going to take our, our soutache. We're going to pretend that it's all finished, which I'm within about an inch of finishing using the, the good side up, not my whipped side that you can see on the back. And then we're just going to lay it right down that center front basting. Now, Michael helped me by removing all the other bastings. You can see those are gone. But I asked him to leave the center front basting because we need to put this right down the center front and that's gonna then enclose all of our, um, our raw edges on, on the joins. It's magic. It is, it's just magic. And then you can sew right down the center or you can sew into your two ditches here. I think I'd go right down the center. Yeah. Make it quicker, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I only have to do one, and that's, mm -hmm. and then that's the finish until we get to the hem. Oh, well, not the hem yet. We're going to do our cartridge bleeding next and prep for that. All right. So, okay. well, we'll do that, and we'll be back. Okay. We have our skirt together and the upper edge of the skirt has been overcast so it doesn't fray. Now we're gonna turn it down 5 eighths of an inch in preparation for our cartridge pleating. So I've just gone along and pinned it in place and now I'm basting that in so that we don't have to worry about it flipping up when we go to cartridge pleat. Well, nice to get a knot right on camera. Just love it. <laughs> love it, love well, it. you know it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to put this down, get this all basted around, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to use your tiger tape um, to help you with the cartridge pleating. The other thing I've done, and on your pattern you'll see it says clip, 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 clip. There is no cartridge pleating on this center front panel. That is flat, but because it's on such a curve, when you go to bend it over, you've got to clip or it won't turn into a nice straight line. So that's what I've that's done in here. that's a great trick for Yeah, that. yep. So I haven't clipped it quite up to the edge because I don't want it to show, but when we pleat, cartridge pleat, the, the cartridge pleating is only going to go from here to the center back seam. So we'll be back when I get this basted and I'll show you how to put your tiger tape in. Okay, I find that tiger tape helps to even out your stitches. And all tiger tape is, is a sticky paper with these very precise lines on it. Now the tiger tape we're using this time is 12 lines. So it's 12 lines to the inch. It comes in other um, combinations, but I happen to like this one because we're going to go under every and other And they will one. get this in their kit. Yes, it comes in your kit, ready to put on. So we're going to start. But if you're watching this and you're doing your own thing, we have tiger tape available in the boutique, so you ah, can buy that. All right, good. Mm -hmm. So I start, because I said we're not going to be pleating this. So I start about an eighth of an inch. Can you see this, Michael, mm -hmm. from the top? And I just, it's adhesive, whoops. But you gotta but make not, it not, even. Um, not it's, not, it's not ruining your silk at all. It comes right off with no residue whatsoever. So I wanna see about an eighth of an inch above because we're gonna put our first line of stitching above. But first we need to get this in place. And those of you, isn't an eighth of an inch, isn't that half of a quarter? <laughs> yes. Yes, well, sometimes. Yes, it is yeah. a half of a quarter. Right. So that, yes, and then a sixteenth is half of that. Yes, yeah. so sometimes <laughs> I have to think about these that. things. So okay. that's what an eighth of an inch is. Yes. 
Yeah, I hadn't. <laughs> okay. Well, some of us are not gifted with the, with math. The, with math. <laughs> I'm only gifted with sewing math. Yeah. That was my only thing. Um, other than that, I am not gifted in math with math at all. Even though I was raised by a man who was a math genius, I was in was my stepfather. He, he was always so frustrated <laughs> that I couldn't well, get I mean, it. <laughs> I'll give him a dress and ask him to make it and see how that works. <laughs> yeah, well, that wouldn't have worked. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing on the other side so that you'll know to do that. And you've got plenty to it work It just with. makes it easy. It does. It makes it much easier. So let me thread up a needle here. The way I want to talk just a minute about this threader because some people really don't like this threader. I can't live without it. I can't either. <laughs> so... But there are tricks to this threader, and one is patience, because it doesn't always thread the first time. The other thing that I found is now I'm pulling out a very long piece of thread, because we're going to do two lines Double. of stitching, and we don't want to run right. out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So... If you noticed, I pulled my thread off the spool. This is 80 weight Orful. 50 weight will also work for this. Um, so I pulled it off. So this is the part that's going to go through the eye of the needle, not the part I cut off the spool. Right, you have to the go the right opposite yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way... Well, that's the, the way you thread a needle anyways. Well, yes, but some people don't know that. Okay. Some people don't know that. Okay. Now, also, a new needle threads better than an old one, and I have when to say, when they're too old, they they it will reject it. It does. It does. And that and you should reject it too, it's true. because then it's 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 ruining your it's ruining your your stitching. I mean, we had an instance uh, where people had their machines here, and uh, Leo had to come and fix their machine, and he walked into the room and he said, "It is not the machine; it's it the that. operator." <laughs> And guess yeah. what? The reason that was malfunctioning, the, the, needle, the needle was dull. Was, well, the needle was dull. Yeah. And yeah. it was messing the silk up. Right. Okay. So you have to have sharp needles. So you lay it in this groove here, and then you push down, and then you pull gently out of the top. And this one threaded perfectly this time. Mm -hmm. So it comes out, and of course you don't pull it out. You've got to pull it out through the loop side, and... That's it. That's it. That's it. So easy. So, so easy. I but... can't live without my threader. <laughs> I can't either. Sorry, I have, people. I have you have to listen to that. I have them everywhere around the yeah, house. I have them, too. I have two on a, one workstation because, you know, I, <laughs> you, you I do one. make a mess and yes. I can't find it. So I have to have one available. Right. So I'm going to go from the back here and I'm going to go right up next to that to that line so you're about an eighth from the edge huh? right right okay. then i'm going to go over the next one and go down and i think the thing and about this is you just whatever you choose to be your your pleat size it has to be the same yes because when we do our next line, which is going to be right below that, the nice thing about Tiger Tape is it shows you where that stitch goes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really simple to do. So we're down and we're up. And the other thing is the Tiger Tape can be reused, if and not infinitely, but it'll it'll go through you know three or four anyway well, that's a good do you have um i guess you just put it back on its spool i just put it back on its spool um it comes on a spool now i've wound this on an embroidery floss plastic floss holder so but you but can wind it right back on mm -hmm. that because it won't stick okay and you just have to be accurate. That's the key. Is well, this is something we accurate, take ta our time with. Yeah. Because it really has to do with how the whole co costume lays and drapes. Yes. And the re 
braces on. on. And that he's it, having a hot time in the old town. Yeah, I? yeah. I wish I had a hose. I'd go out and spray him. <laughs> Well, it's been a great week in California. No rain. It's been amazing. It's hasn't been it? gorgeous. We were we were worried about you all coming. Oh. Not necessarily the rain, but then the power outages. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. the trees come down, and then it, right. So, it, but but it has been a gorgeous oh, week. Fabulous. And certainly better than upstate New York, which got snow today. So wow. I'm thr thrilled to be out here and but miss we have that. Been, it has been cold here. Well, it has, but yeah. I haven't been out of the building except That's true. for one, one drive yeah. around the seashore. Well, we don't, so. we don't let you out. I know. I got locked up here with the ghosts up, upstairs. So, though I actually, there haven't been around this time, so... Well, you know, David had never had an experience, and then he had an experience um, two weeks ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Yep. It's not that he's a non-believer. He just had never had a uh, an experience. So what happened? Well, we were... Uh, I don't even know if it was... Do you think it was upstairs? Yes. It like yes. <laughs> See, see now, now I don't even believe, but at the time he believed. <laughs> so we were, we were where we are now, and um, and there's a floor above us. But these are how how tall are the ceilings in this room, David? They're about fifteen. They're fifteen feet. So um, above us is another floor, and we were about where we are now. And there, was, uh, someone was walking upstairs, the whole length of the building. Really, and Ooh. you know, between us and the, I mean, there is the roof, and somebody <laughs> could be walking on the roof, but we wouldn't hear it. No, because you wouldn't at all. There's uh -uh. another uh, floor, yeah, be floor before there. that. Yeah. So it was. It was, was the first time he'd heard, and I've heard that many times. Hmm. I've never been afraid, and it's never been. Any kind of a threat. Scary, no. yes. Mm -mm. Almost more protective and, you know, doing a, a patrol. <laughs> okay. Well, you're being be patrolled. Guiding me at night, guarding well, I mean, me. Well, you, you're, you're okay to be here. So yeah. since you're okay to be here, you know, it's a sewing lady. Guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, the Native uh, um, uh, Americans... Um, there, there's a tradition of they're called the watchers. Mm, mm -hmm. So they're just watching, making sure everybody's okay. But if you need some help, uh, all you have to say is, I, "I could use some help," and they'll they'll help you out of a jam. Hmm. Oh, well, that's good to know. And that happens all the time here. Where's my um, uh, <laughs> Where's my needle? Yeah, That's where's my needle? That's the most common one. Now, I have never had anything move, but um, other people have had things move. Really? Mm hmm In Ooh. front of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I've never impressive. had That's that. impressive. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard there have been doors open that shouldn't have been. Oh, that happens all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, the, 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 there's a certain amount of mischief in that. Okay, so there's my first line, which you can't see. You're not going to be able to oh, see this. Oh, we're not going to see it, are we? No, <laughs> no, you're not. It's, it's secret. Then we'll do the one below it that's identical. All right, so we will do the one below it, and we will come back and show and you reveal. the reveal. <laughs> reveal and show you the, the fun part. Okay, now we still have the, the white that you see is the basting to keep the 5 8 inch down. But the big reveal is, how did I do on my stitching here? Uh, pretty good, I'd say pretty good. The idea is that we have every, get this out here, is that a good view? I think that's very good. So we've got every stitch exactly 
above or below the previous one so that when we pull it, it really pleats like a cartridge. So we're gonna Let's pull, pull our threads and see what we have here. Now, like always when you're pulling pleating, I pull it over the thread rather than pulling the thread. Mm -hmm. It works much better just to Gentle. slide it gently over. Mm -hmm. And there we are. Now we've got one spot here, which is on the seam allowance, which is always bulky because of the amount of weight. But you can see it goes in and out and in and out like an accordion. It's gorgeous. So yeah. can we turn it the other way so oh. they, can, they can see it? And, oh, and from the back? We should see from the back. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. And of course this, and I'm not going to tie it off until I get my waistband in place and I know that it's going to be right. you can make right. a little adjustments, can't yes, you? Yes, you can. You can make adjustments right up until you start your stitching. So I am have taken my waistband, yes, right here. And I would recommend trying your waistband on your doll to make sure that this is the right size. And I once I got it to the right size, I turned back the ends well, about three eighths of an inch. So fit it to your doll. Whip them down, but you want to fit it to your doll with underwear, if possible. Of course, because she's always going to be a little chubbier without. The other thing I did was mark my center front. And you did that with a Frickson. I pin. did. I did. So now we're going to will... well disappear with heat. So now I'm going to match up. We still have our center front there. So I'm going to match up that. And of course, we don't have any cartridge pleating here. So this is going to be applied flat out to here. Like that. And then we can go right to the end because we know that's the end. I, this has got the raw side up. So we write because to that's going to flip up because that. that's going to flip this skirt's up the gonna other hang off of this. Yes, it is. In fact, one of the terms for cartridge pleating is hanging skirt. To make a hanging skirt, it's a very old term, but that is one of the definitions. And I think I'm not going to put my pin through that double part there because it's a lot of fabric at one time, and we really don't want it cartridge pleated right up no. to the bitter end no. there. So now we can kind of pull and see where we are once we get it untangled here. You see that the cartridge pleating is gonna it's gonna go in. It's gonna go in pretty nicely. You have to do little the, wigglies. The other thing I'm gonna do with those ends now is I'm gonna do a figure eight over my pen to hold it like that. That way we still have and we then, still have options. You still have options. I can get the pleats arranged like they should be. It looks like I could go just a tiny bit tighter. But anyway, let's start here, right at the center front, and. I'm going to go center front to the back and then the other center front to the back. So I'm going to use my white thread and I'm going to have to get the camera up here like that. So I'm going to run my thread up through here like that. And at this point, I'm going to just whip it like it's that. Just, it's just a little small whip stitch. It is at this point, because this is flat. So I'm just catching the edge of my twill tape, the very edge of the silk, like that. Keeping my stitches pretty close together now, because that's gonna show when we lift up, so. You could do this in red thread or white thread. I happen to prefer the white because I'm going on to white twill tape, but you could also use red thread for A this. A lot of Hure garments, they, they would use the color of the, of the uh, skirt. Okay. 
and they would be doing exactly what you're doing. doing. Even if they were going to apply the tape Over. into the bodice. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This would be just a standard. Yeah. And I'm sure they could do this in their sleep. Oh, I'm sure they could much quicker than I can. Well, I mean, if you did it... Every day, every day all day yeah. long, yes. I mean, probably you do, get pretty I know you good do at it. Something like this all day long, but not always the same. Not always the cartridge same. bleeding. Get over here to the end. And I'll, then I'll be able to pick up and show you what the cartridge bleeding, what you're looking This is the easy part, of course. Now, in the cartridge pleating, we're going to pick up the forward part of every pleat, and the back part of the pleat hangs free. So, so the this, forward part would be the round... The round part okay. next to the waistband. Okay. So it's almost like every other... Is it every other or every... It's every. Okay. If you do every other and you turn it over to the front, you, have gaps. you have gaps, you have holes there which you don't want to see. Now I took out my, my anchoring pin, so I'm going to have to put that back as soon as I get to the edge, but I couldn't get to the edge without it being in the way. one more and then we'll put that anchoring tape back down again or anchoring pin back down let's not get the threads caught up in it however now we're going to go one more here and now we're on to the away from that front panel and I'm just going to go into here. And that's just a very simple procedure at this point. Now we'll put that pin back in, pull our threads up again, oops, and wind them around. It'll be nice to get them out of the way. Oh, I will. <laughs> get them behind you. Okay, so first I got to find them. Here we go, right there. That's going to be about right when I... That looks pretty good to it me. It does, when I pull it up full. And you would think when we were sewing along that those were really long threads, but they really weren't. Of course, the longer your stitch is, the more fabric you can take up into the pleating. Well, it is amazing the amount of fabric you can you get can, yeah. in. Okay, so now I'm going to look for the front of the pleat, which is right here. I'm going to go into there, and then I'm going to move you just to have the to next do it over one. And over. Yep, you just catch the front of every pleat, and you just have to be compulsive to make sure you're. You don't miss one because it shows up as a hole in the front. But you can go back and fix it. You can. Mm -hmm. You can. But I don't like to do work over if I don't have no, to. No, no. <laughs> but, but sometimes you, know, you do. Sometimes you do. You go, uh-oh, have a vacation there. So. All right. Well, we'll get this finished, and we'll come back and we'll show, show them the finished product. Yes, we will. Okay. So now I've done the cartridge pleating on the other side. So this is what it looks like. Oops, get my threads out of the way here. On the inside, you'll see. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Looks great. Yeah. So it's this is the cartridge part where it sticks up like that. And if you're doing, just by the way, if you're doing a larger amount, you're going to have larger amounts showing in the back. And that's how you would get like, uh, you know, a 50, 60 inch um, gathering into a tiny, space. tiny, mm -hmm. tiny spot. But these are all going to be in the back. And what happens is they just lay down. And they so, actually help create 
the, sh the right shape too. Yes, they they, they do. really in a way are like a, an enhancer. Yeah, that looks really good, Cheryl. Thank you. So it just uh, now we've got a hanging skirt. Right, we have a hanging skirt, and then we would put a hook and eye right here. You try it on your doll and put your hook and actually thread loop right there on your t on your tape. So now we need to do the hems. Okay, we have a one inch wide single fold bias tape. So we're, we need to press out one edge. And when you're doing that, you can actually, because it's on the bias, shape it so it's going to fit the skirt better. So what I do is take this and I'm curving it as I'm pressing. I want to press that one out. And I'm going to curve it as I'm pressing it out. It's just going to make it just it's just going to lay easy. in so nice. So you do that on the whole piece. So you're just ironing flat that one edge, but yet we're going to have enough of a visual here because that's going to be your stitching line. So it's just making it? It's just curving it. And then you won't have all these pleats up here. And it goes into that A-line skirt. That's a great technique, um, Cheryl. Yeah, I works really nicely. I learned something. Today. Did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> I did. Uh, whoops. That's why I sign up to these See classes. See up to these classes for to learn new tricks in <laughs> sewing. That's a good one. So okay, it doesn't so, really matter that we're not necessarily following the shape of the skirt. We're no, just, we're, just we're just creating giving it a, a curve here, mm -hmm. so it's much easier to put in. So let's go look at the skirt that I've already done and show you how that works. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got our curved bias, and like I said, we're going to be right sides together here and then you're going to sew in that ditch that was left by the pressing. You attach that and all the way And that's a quarter around. of an inch? Um, it's actually a little bit more than that. Um, it's like three eighths. Okay. Yeah, but if you've got your line, you've got- You're you know, following you're, the line. You're following mm -hmm. the line. So then you're gonna take this and you're going to press it again with this going toward the skirt because we're gonna be using that as the little bit that's underneath here. So when we fold it down, we fold it right to there. And so you have a little bit of red at the bottom. And what, are, what does that work out measurement wise? It's three eighths because okay. we're using, right. because we're using this. Okay. That's gonna be the turn right there. So you just kind of work it down with your fingers and then and you're going to put some pins. And I wouldn't right. press it till after some. No, uh -uh. Yeah. no, I wouldn't either. But as you can see, as we're coming around, and it's going to it help. It's going to help the, the skirt have a nice. It fall. does, mm -hmm. and that's the reason that I use this tape, because the the skirt is soft and drapey, and when we get to the hem, we want some body to it. Right. So I'm going to pin this all the way around, and then I'm just going to slip stitch this in, in to white. the lining. Yeah, just the lining. And white to the lining. Just be sure you don't get any catches on this no. side because that white thread is going to be really oh, yeah. visible. Mm -hmm. So be careful about that. And when we finish that, we'll come back and show you the finish. Here we go with a finished, a finished hem. And I want to show you how beautiful by stretching that bias, that hem just went in perfectly. It's gorgeous. It's just it? great. Now the last thing we have to do here is you're going to have to over trim and then overcast all these seams in white. And then your skirt will be totally Done. ready to mm -hmm. use. Yep. And we've tried it on and it, it, and it fits, fits perfectly. Like we've yes. got to do a little clipping of threads here yes. and there, but we're done. We're done, yes. And so we'll move on now to the jacket. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.